Hello! Today we are starting with the first video in our series on wind engineering. We will talk in particular about uh, the reasons for wind engineering, about uh, the main definitions in wind engineering and at the end of the video we will present uh, some of the main physical concepts that we use uh, in the field of wind engineering. So, what is wind engineering? Well, wind engineering is a mixture of atmospheric sciences, structural engineering or civil engineering and mechanical engineering. Uh, the main goal is to uh, estimate uh, effects that wind can have on any structure. And the structures we are talking about are uh, in particular buildings, houses, so low-rise and high-rise buildings, bridges, uh, all kinds of towers, transmission lines, and so on. That also means that wind engineering is not the analysis of uh, uh, wind on uh, moving objects, let's say like that. So if we have a car, space shuttle, airplane, then uh, wind engineering is not dealing with these types of, let's say, structures or, or objects. Another field of in in engineering called uh, aerospace engineering or uh, aeronautical uh, engineering is dealing with these particular phenomena, okay? So you can already see that in the field of wind engineering we want our structures to be uh, steady and not move. Uh, or if they are moving, then we want to control their movement and in particular put it to minimum. Okay. That being said, you can also see that uh, in wind engineering we are particularly interested in strong, wi strong winds, extreme winds such as winds due to hurricanes, uh, thunderstorms, tornadoes and a similar type of extreme wind events. What are the topics that we cover in wind engineering? Well, the most important topic in wind engineering is the influence of wind on structures and safety of, of people in uh, buildings or people that are crossing the bridge and so on. So the structural stability is the main concern of wind engineering. And the reason is uh, simple, right? As I said, safety of people in that structure and around that structure. The next topic uh, is the pedestrian wind comfort to minimize the inconveniences that, peop uh, that people might have due to wind. We will learn in future videos that uh, uh, urban environments with a lot of buildings can modify the wind field and that modification can uh, result in a low level zones of very strong wind. So we want to know how we can predict where these zones will occur and then how to minimize them. Wind engineering is also investigation of uh, wind effects on building ventilation. It's very important uh, topic, not necessarily for the safety of people, but to create buildings that are energy efficient. And uh, uh, topic that is lately very, very uh, important for sustainability, resilience, in particular in context of climate change. Then we also have wind driven rain. As uh, the name suggests, we investigate how the wind affects the precipitation rain. So if we have a building that for some reason has an opening, uh, we want to know how the wind will uh, well, move the rain through the opening, how that will infect affect the building and so on. It's also important for the roof of the building, how the in strong uh, uh, precipitation uh, and if we have wind together with precipitation, how the shingles on the roof will, re will react and so on. And lastly, the air pollution around buildings is also a subject of wind engineering. Here, this comes with asterisk. What do I mean by that? I mean, if we are interested in pollution uh, dispersion over large areas, over the, 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 the scale of maybe entire city or even bigger, then it is usually, not usually, then it is the subject of atmospheric sciences and uh, dispersion modeling. Uh, but if we are interested in small scale dispersion uh, modeling, po the, the pollution dispersion modeling, then it is subject of wind engineering. Okay, uh, now when we know the topics of wind engineering and we know also uh, the reasons why we have wind engineering. Let's quickly look into the main physical principles that uh, permeate the field of wind engineering. The first physical principle is the, uh, or rather the first two physical principles are the principle of static.
what is the principle of static? Well, let's say we have a surface and we have a building. This is our building. And now we have wind. Of course, as I just said, the main goal of uh, wind engineering to have this building constructed in a way that it can sustain this wind speed. Sustain means stay where it is and not collapse or be translated somewhere else. That means the principle of static says that the sum of all forces due to wind has to be zero and the sum of all moments of forces due to wind also needs to be zero. And I would say this is the first and the most important principle in wind engineering. And it's the principle of statics uh, that we call principle of statics in physics and engineering. I hope you are familiar with the concept of uh, force. If you are not familiar with the concept of moment, we will cover that in future videos, don't worry. But uh, in one, two sentences, forces are related to translation. So we apply force to a body and that body kind of accelerates in a straight line uh, or it can, yeah, let's say in a straight line, it's a translation. Moment of the force is related to rotation of the body. So the moment of the force is defined as the vector product of vector product of the arm of the force, let's say R, cross product force. Or uh, if we are interested in intensity, then it is uh, R F times the sine of the angle theta, and the angle theta is clearly angle between the uh, force and the arm of the force. I will stop here because I don't want to now go into details of the moment of the force, but we will cover it in the next video. However, what I will tell you based on this equation, and this equation is the following. If uh, somebody has a hammer, and let's say they want to hit you in the head, but they are uh, polite enough to ask you, do you want me to hit you like this? Or you want me to hit you like this? Then, thanks to the concept of the moment of the force or torque, you should always ask them to hit you like this. Because as you can see, the arm of the force in this case is much bigger, which means that the torque is much bigger. I'll keep this here. You never know when you need it. Okay. The second principle that we use extensively in the field of wind engineering is Navier-Stokes equations. However, I will not put uh, these, two these equations now uh, on the paper because we will derive them in our series on atmospheric sciences. But these equations are used to understand how wind as a fluid uh, behaves uh, under the influence of buildings or any other structure. It is also used to estimate uh, influence of wind on pedestrians and so on. Now, in, in a general case, these equations are not solvable. So we need to use some uh, mathematical and physical sorcery to solve these equations. And this sorcery is either simplification or using some numerical methods to solve it. Okay, now we came to the end of this video. And I hope that uh, throughout this video, you learned what is wind engineering? Why do we need wind engineering? And we really need it because you want to live in a building that will not collapse due to wind. When you drive a car, you want to cross the bridge and not be afraid that if it is windy, the bridge might collapse. And you also learned uh, the basic, basic uh, physical principles behind uh, wind engineering. And that is sum of all forces needs to be zero due to wind. Sum of all for uh, moments of forces or torques, it's a synonym has to be zero and also the solution of Navier-Stokes equations that provides us with a wealth of information uh, about the behavior of the fluid wind uh, when it comes to contact with uh, buildings and other types of structures.
Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video and have the excellent rest of the day. Goodbye.